All right, Hellbound Hellraiser 2 came out in 1988, one year after the original, and it was written by Clive Barker and directed by Tony Randall. I don't know who Tony Randall is. His name doesn't ring a bell, so I don't know if he did other things after this, but something that always kind of bothered me about the titling is it's Hellbound Hellraiser 2. I would have preferred if it was Hellraiser 2 Hellbound. That always kind of bothered me a little bit. I don't know why. But the plot of this movie is basically Kirsty from the original film is in a mental hospital or something sometime after the original movie. And she has a doctor by the name of Dr. Chenard who is a weird dude. He's into the puzzle box and he resurrects um, Julia from the first film through the mattress where she died. Um, Ashley Lawrence is back as Kirsty. Uh, she's decent in this one. Um, I kind of, you know, I feel you like you like her character a little bit less. You don't care for her as much, but she's still decent. You got Julia who's back. Um, Claire Higgins plays her, and I still hate her. <laughs> Very uh, mean, nasty, evil woman. I've always disliked the character. Um, you got Dr. Chenard. Like I said, he's a weird guy. Uh, into the puzzle box. Just strange. Um, you got a mute girl by the name of, uh, I think, Tiffany or Jennifer or something like that. I think it's Tiffany. Um She's an interesting character. Um, first off, let me say, I do like Hellraiser 2. Um, I actually used to like it more than the original when I was growing up. I saw it uh, probably sometime after I seen the original when I was a kid, and I always liked it more. But as I got older, uh, recently, past couple years, I've you know gravitated more towards the first one than, this, than Hellraiser 2. But I do like it. But to me, the biggest problem is it kind of feels like they tried to cram a little bit too much into it um, with backstories and, and some of the plot points. Um, feels like it was a little bit thrown together, a little rushed it sometimes. Um, the You get the Cenobites back, you get Pinhead and uh, the Chatter Teeth one and the other two, plus you get a new one. Um, Doug Bradley plays Pinhead again. He does a fantastic job. Um, when he speaks, uh, very creepy. Um, the Cenobites look awesome as usual, and the special effects are great in this one. Um, you get Julia, and she's skinless, uh, kind of like uh, Frank was in the original. Um, I think sh her makeup looks a little bit better than Frank's did. Um, you really get to see the the, the skinless uh, her muscles and the her spine sticks out. You can see the bones in her shoulder blades and her skull. You get to see the veins throughout her body. Very gross. Um, very bloody special effects. Uh, there's a scene where Julia is skinless and she's in Dr. Chenard's house and his house is really white. There's a lot of white uh, wall paper, uh, wall, painted walls, or the walls are painted white, um, white carpet and the, the redness of the blood really pops in the house. Um, the, there's some other decent special effects in it. Uh, the new Cenobite, you got you get to see him, his uh, um, special effects as he gets turned into the Cenobite. Looks pretty cool. Um, you get to see the Cenobites a little bit more this time. And that's always awesome. Uh, I was, that, that's probably the two biggest reasons I've always watched Hellraiser was the Cenobites and the special effects. Um, the gore. The blood. Um... Doug Bradley, uh, who plays Pinhead, you get a little bit of his uh, back, a little bit of a backstory on Pinhead, which is interesting. Um, but like I said, it feels a little rushed and not explained very well. Um, more so with the mute girl, 
she has a, a kind of a flashback story and it, it just feels not explained well and the the story's kind of all over the place in a way like um there's a big labyrinth maze thing and it, it's just kind of weird it comes out of nowhere um the the there's a scene where Chenard gets a uh, mental patient and he has a he's very insane he's pretty he's real crazy he thinks that there's bugs crawling all through his flesh and he keeps saying you know get them off of me and he brings the patient Chenard brings the patient and puts him on Julia's bed and he gives him a razor and the guy just starts hacking up his body and when I was a kid, that scene always bothered me. I can never really watch it. I always had to look away. Um, it even kind of bothers me a little bit today, um, which is kind of rare for a horror film to do to me. I'm a little desensitized, I guess. Uh, but when I was a kid, I could never watch it. I always had to look away. Something about the bugs crawling through his skin and he's hacking them up and cutting his arms and chest and stuff. Uh, very good special effects always bothered me um that's how Julia gets resurrected through the blood of that guy uh, let's see the the labyrinth itself looks pretty cool um, like I said kinda weird and I don't really know what it is um, this edition is the is an Anchor Bay release there I know there's like a 20th anniversary edition or a, a 25th anniversary edition or something which is better has more special features and I know there's a blu-ray which I don't think has any special features I'm not sure but this edition has an audio commentary I haven't listened to it and it has a featurette which I did watch um, pretty interesting uh, some interviews and stuff it's kinda short um, probably I would go with the uh, Anchor Bay 20th Anniversary Edition or whatever. That's probably the better, the best version to get. Um, what else? You know, besides the special effects and the um, the Cenobites, if you like the first Hellraiser, you'd probably enjoy this one. Um, it has it's you know on the same level as the first one with the special effects and the uh, Cenobites they're cool to look at but the main problem is the story which I kinda thought was the main problem in the first one uh, but this one's even more zany and all over the place uh, you know I, I, I'll continue to watch Hellraiser 2 um, it, it's you know I've been watching it since I was a kid and I think that you know for the special effects it's, it's definitely worth seeing but, um, yeah, that's about it, and bye.